السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful. I praise Allah, the Almighty alone, and I send the best peace and blessings upon His Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Brothers and sisters, our guests here in the studio, welcome to a new episode of Islam on Vague. In today's episode, inshallah, we'll tackle the fifth article of faith that every Muslim must believe in, which is the last day, the hereafter, the day of judgment, the day of accountability. Basically, it has a beginning. So when we say, وَأَن تُؤْمِنَ بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And uh, you must believe in the last day. That is, the last day of our holy life, and the first day of the hereafter. That is the meaning of the last day. The last day of the worldly life. And the first day of the hereafter. Allah the Almighty stated in the Quran. A chapter which is known as the Romans. Verse number 27. He said. الْخَلْقَ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ وَهُوَ أَهْوَنُ عَلَيْهِ This verse is very challenging. Allah the Almighty says. It is he who begins the creation from the scratch and it is he who returns the creation back to life. And it is most easy for him, logically speaking. Which one is easier, to begin something from the scratch or to duplicate it? Or to make similar copies of it? Or to fix it? Or to resettle it? It is definitely the creation from the start, from the scratch, is most difficult. But it is all easy for Allah the Almighty. He's trying to prove to us that the matter of resurrection and bringing us back to life on the day of accountability is very easy. It is most easy for him. Once, one of the Meccan pagans came to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They denied the resurrection. They could not believe that after we die and our bodies will decompose and ruin, that one day we'll come back to life. And that's why those who don't have this concept of resurrection, they do as they wish. Because there is nothing called outlaw. Whatever they can do, as long as they are not being watched, as long as they will not be arrested, they do it. No problem. There is no prohibition. Because they think this is it. This is the only life they're going to live. And that's why they're called disbelievers. And you cannot expect any good from them. They only fear supervision and the security cameras. Once they have the opportunity to steal, they will not hesitate to do that. If they can do anything to get rich, to uh, uh, rip off people, even to kill for revenge, as long as they will not be caught, they have no problem with that. That's why belief in the last day distinguishes between the believers and the disbelievers. So a man of the pagans, the disbelievers, came to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And he picked up a rotten bone. A bone of a human who had died years and years ago. Then he came to Prophet Muhammad and he rubbed the bone between his fingers. And it turned into powder. He said, Oh Muhammad, do you claim that your God will be capable of bringing this rotten bone back to life after it had decomposed? Allah the Almighty answered this question in the Quran, but I want you to listen to the reply of Prophet Muhammad before the verse was revealed. He said, Yes, certainly, indeed, he will. Not only that, he will cause you to die, then he will bring you back to life, then he will send you to fire. <laughs> because you don't believe in the day of resurrection, you're going to experience it yourself, and you'll end up eternally in fire. May Allah protect us. The Quran said, وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ قَالَ مَنْ يُحِي الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ عَرْمِينَ This foolish pagan who came to Prophet Muhammad, he gave him an example. How could God revive this? Allah the Almighty says, He has forgotten 
or pretended that he has forgotten his original creation. Look at yourself. How were you created? From a sperm. An Adam from dust. Then it is most easy for Allah to revive the dead. قُلْ يُحْيِيهَا الَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ The one who created it in the first time is definitely capable to bring it back to life. The souls and the bodies, not just the souls. Another very interesting indication and a proof that resurrection and the day of judgment is a fact and it is possible. Logically, every day we experience a minor death. Minor death? What am I talking about here? I'm talking about sleep. When we go to sleep, that is similar to death. Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, He describes to us about the unseen, about something that no science can achieve if Allah the Almighty did not put our hands on it. He said, وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا جَرَحْتُمْ بِالنَّهَارِ it is he who takes your souls unto him at night. So when we go to sleep, we are in a semi-death. What is the proof to that? It is very simple. Do you guys see dreams? Have you ever seen a dream? Okay, sometimes good and sometimes bad, right? Some people come to me and say, you know, I have seen a dream and I would like for you to interpret it for me. And they keep narrating the dream which can take 5, 10 and 15 minutes. Hey man, you're caught in a movie. It's a long story. Guess what? This whole thing happened in a fraction of a second. When you are asleep, because it's in a different world, related to the souls. The soul was somewhere else. That, you know what, when I was asleep, I have seen my, myself travel to India, and I rode on the back of, a, of an elephant, and I've seen Taj Mahal, then I traveled to Malaysia, then I went to Niagara Falls. Then I returned back to Cairo, Egypt. Then, 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 then. Can a human being do all of that at once? No, it happened in a fraction of a second. Because this is not our reality, our real life. Rather, it is another transitory stage. That's why it is possible. After we die, that we will come back to life. Because death on every single day where humans experience it, the semi-death or asleep is similar to death in this regard. Then Allah the Almighty says, ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ And afterward, after you die, the actual death, not the semi-death, not the sleep, unto him you shall return back. ثُمَّ يُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ There has to be a question, big question mark, which is, why? Why would you bring us back to life? Finally, you got rid of this life, its difficulties and hardship. No, this is not it. This life is an exam room, is a mean of test. Then he shall inform you about what you've done in this life. Then the recompense will begin. In another beautiful chapter, verse number 39 of Fussilat, explained in details. One of the chapters of the Quran. Allah the Almighty utilizes something that's factual, that we see on regular basis, on seasonal basis, in order to prove the possibility of resurrection, which is reviving the barren land. Reviving the barren land. When Allah sends down the rain on a barren land, it becomes alive, and it is stirred of life, and grows fruits and vegetables. So we eat and we feed our cattle. Then once again it dies. Then Allah the Almighty, after we sow the seeds, would send down the rain to bring forth another set or group of fruits and vegetations and so on. This cycle is similar to uh, life and death. That's another proof. So in verse number 39, Allah the Almighty says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنَّكَ تَرَى الْأَرْضَ خَاشِعَةً فَإِذَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْهَا الْمَاءَ تَزَّتْ وَرَبَتْ وَأَنْبَتَتْ مِنْ كُلِّ زَوْجٍ بَهِيجٍ إِنَّ الَّذِي أَحْيَاهَا لَمُحْيِ الْمَوْتَ إِنَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Amongst his signs to verify and to prove that there will be life after death and resurrection 
is that you see the barren land. Once we send down the rain on it, it becomes alive again. It brings forth fruits and vegetations. The one who revived the death of this barren land and who does that on a regular basis, he's the same one who's going to bring up back the dead from their death into life. Resurrect them. Indeed, he is able to do all things. How Allah created Adam from dust and the process of forming the fetus in the womb. Beautiful verse, number five, of a chapter which is known as Al-Hajj Pilgrimage. Allah the Almighty explains in it, here is a sequence. Ya ayyuha nas O mankind, not just the believers. In kuntum fi raibim min al ba'th. If you have any doubt concerning the possibility of resurrection, let me tell you this. We've created you from dust, Adam. Then from the sperm. Then from a hanging blood clot. Then from a morsel of flesh, formed and unformed. In order to explain to you, we have no means whatsoever to know about this process of creation in embryology except through what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have informed us more than 1400 years ago. Just recently, science and embryology came to prove that every single statement which was revealed in the Quran is absolutely true. Allah the Almighty is informing us about this cycle of forming the embryo in the womb of his mother then bringing the child to this life to a, a fixed term. After being babies and children, will allow you to grow until you reach your strength. But some of you would die before that. And some of you would die before reaching adulthood. And some would die as children. And some of you would allow to live until they reach senility. So that they will behave as the same day they were born. They would lose their memory. They will tend to forget their names. Sometimes they will urinate on themselves because they have reached a very old age. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who manages the cycle on a regular basis. So he's indicating that it is possible to revive you the same way that he created you and to answer the big question which is why would Allah bring us back to life after this? That will be answered after the short break. So hang around, we'll return back inshallah very soon. The translation has been indirectly influenced with the Israeli narrative. We haven't faced any problems in our preparations. You can't call it uh, the uh, wise uh, Hajj. In Egypt, you have a huge amount of initiative going on in terms of developing uh, qualifications in different parts of the system. Reading helps you um, gain knowledge, but saving the net doesn't help you at all. They are all uh, welcome to uh, participate in the discussion and the debate about the development of qualifications. What types of books our children do or should read? Join me for further discussion of Focus Point. Huda, a light in every home. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Why? Why there is a need for life after death? Why there has to be resurrection? Simply because we have been given a free will, a freedom to choose, a freedom to do or not to do. So that's why we have to receive our recompense, whether good for good or bad for bad. Allah the Almighty said in the third chapter of the Quran, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ That's a fact. Muslims and non-Muslims, believers and non-believers, even atheists, everybody believes in death because we've seen it on a regular basis. Every soul shall taste death. وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ أُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ 
Then after death, on the day of judgment, you guys shall receive your wages, whether good or bad. In a whole chapter which is known as Al-Qiyamah or the Resurrection, one of the names of the Day of Judgment, Allah the Almighty says, أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنْ يُتْرَكَ سُدَى Do man think that he will be left alone, neglected, without accountability? You do as you wish, without being rewarded nor punished? Absolutely not. Then this whole creation was in vain. And that's why in chapter 115 of uh, in, in chapter Al-Mu'minun or the believers, verse 115, Allah Almighty says, Do you people think that we've created you in vain? Was it a game? And that you will not be returned back to us? Obviously not. There is a reason for creation. And there is a reason for this life. And there is a reason for life after death. Which is accountability. Verse number 7 of a chapter which is known as at Allah the Almighty says about the claim of the disbelievers who wish that there will not be any life after death. The disbelievers claim that they will not be resurrected. Says certainly by my Lord You shall be resurrected You shall be brought back to life after death And then you will be informed About what you've done And this is most easy for Allah the Almighty As Muslims we must believe in the possibility of the occurrence of the day of judgment. Why? Because we have been informed both in the Quran and in the sound traditions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, about the day of judgment. We have been commanded to prepare for the day. We have been commanded to prepare our luggage, our provision for the longer journey. This journey, the life of this life, is very short and brief. Then there will be a waiting period which is known as the life of Al-Barzakh in the grave or between death and resurrection. Whether the person had been buried or swallowed by a shark or a whale or burned to ash or, 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 he will be also awaiting his recompense on the day of judgment. No matter, even if the person was torn into pieces, was burned to ash. Allah the Almighty is able to revive him or her back to life. Bring him back to life. Everybody, human, angels, jinn, animals, for accountability. There is a beautiful verse in the Quran. The verse is also named with, uh, the, the chapter is named with one of the names of the Day of Judgment, which is al haqqah we find the Qur'an named the Day of Judgment with several names. And several chapters have been named after the names of the Day of Judgment. All of those names are horrifying, terrifying, and shocking. Because this is what's going to happen on the Day of Judgment. By the end of time, there will be a major earthquake. So one of the chapters will be known as al haqqah It will bring the truth, will prevail. Al-Qari'ah, because it would strike in everybody. Az-Zalzala, because it would shake everything. There will be a major earthquake. The mountains will be like scatter, uh, people will be like scatter butterfly. And the mountains, the solid mountains, rocks and stones will be like shredded wool. Out of fear of the day of judgment. A pregnant woman would drop her load and the baby's hair would turn gray. Out of fear. وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارًا وَمْآهُمْ بِسُكَارًا And you will see people acting like drunk. In reality, they are not drunk. They are not intoxicated. But it is the maximum fear which will people experience on the day. That's why normally Prophet Muhammad would warn us and the believers by saying, let him who believes in Allah and in the last day to do such and such good deed. Or let him who believes in Allah and in the last day to abstain from doing such and such bad deed. من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليكرم ضيفة فليكرم جارة 
فليقل خيرا أو ليصمد let him who believes in Allah and in the last day to honor his guest to honor his neighbor to say what's good or to be quiet to zip off his mouth so these indications remind us with the day of judgment with its possibility we have to believe in it and we have to work hard in order to prepare for it the Quran told us that in Surah Al-Haqqah which is one of the names of the day of judgment that on the day فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينَهُ As for those who receive the records Record? What record? The record of our good or bad deeds In, in the right hand that means Your deeds have been accepted and they're all good What about him? فَيَقُولُهَا أُمُقْرَأُوا كِتَابِيَ He's gonna call on everybody Come and read my record He's happy He has repeat, received his report card Indicating that he succeeded and he will make it to heaven. He receives salvation. As for him who received the record of his deeds in his left hand, indicating that he will be destroyed, he will say, Ya laytani lam uta kitabi. I believe that I have not received my record. I, believe, I, I, I hope and I, I, I pray that I did not have to receive my record, nor was I resurrected. Because he knows what's awaiting him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said that there will be some signs preceding the occurrence of the Day of Judgment. Have been explained in detail, some minor signs and major signs. In all what the Prophet ﷺ have said, Muslims and the believers must believe in. Such as uh, the appearance of the false Messiah, then his defeat upon the hand of uh, Jesus, the son of Mary, upon his second return. And the last sign, which will be the actual beginning of the Day of Judgment, is when the sun rises from the west. Then there will not be any chance for repentance or belief. It will be over. In the remaining couple of minutes, I would like to take a couple of questions. Okay. Wa alaikum salam I'm Ataullah from India. Just I want to ask, uh, what will happen to someone on the Day of Judgment who never hear about Islam? This is a very good question. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, answered. First of all, Allah Almighty said in the Quran, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا That we're not going to punish or torture or hold any person accountable until we send to him a messenger. So people who have been living in mountains have never heard, I have seen some people, have never heard about, you know, anything of what we know. They don't neither know reading nor writing. They don't use uh, spoons nor force. They don't want even clothes. Let alone hearing about prophets and books. For such people on the Day of Judgment who have never heard of Allah or His books, Allah the Almighty would not punish them for what they did not know. But rather, He will test them on that day. And those who will pass the test will make it to heaven. And those who will fail will be destroyed. The children who died before reaching the puberty age will make it to heaven because Allah the Almighty does not hold any, any person accountable unless if he is responsible, unless if he comes to his senses, insane, minors, infants, even if they were the children of non-believers, because they have not made up their minds nor decided for what religion to choose, whether to believe or to disbelieve. Next. Okay. I would like to ask, how long will the day of judgment last? And what is the purpose of its lasting for a long span of time? You know, the answer to this question is very terrifying. The Quran says that the length of the day will be equivalent to 50,000 years of our time. That is before the actual beginning of accountability, where the entire universe, every living creature, everything was created by Allah will be resurrected, and everybody will be standing in a huge plane, from the very first to the very last. Angels, human, jinn, everybody will be waiting for Allah's decision with regards to as when to begin the actual accountability. People will be frightened, people will be sweating, people will be suffering. The day will be equivalent to 50,000 years. It is hard to imagine, but this is what Allah Almighty stated in the Quran. And He said you got to prepare for this day. For the believers... The length of the day will not be that much. It will be like between two prayers. It will not be that much. But for the disbelievers, for the sinners, it will be a lot for them. They will suffer badly. They will beg Allah 
to dismiss them even if he were to take them to hell. They think that this day is the most horrible thing and there will not be anything much more harsher than terrible than that. But a process of intercision would begin by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Then people would be dismissed for accountability and that's another uh, era that would begin. We ask Allah the Almighty to save us and give us salvation on the day of judgment. He said that no one will be saved except those who believe in His oneness. Those who attribute or ascribe to Allah a son or a daughter or a wife or partners in worship will not be saved as Allah the Almighty stated in the Quran. May Allah save all of us and until next episode I leave you in peace. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanallah. والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم Glory be to Allah All praise to Allah there is no God but Allah, Allah is great. All power and might belong to Allah, the Most High, the Great.